Hello, my dear friends from Bothell United Methodist Church. This is your friend, Pastor Joel Rodriguez from United Methodist Church in Sunnyside. It's a good pleasure and a great honor and a deepest joy also to, to see and to talk with you during this brief message that I'm going to share with every one of you. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you to Pastor Joe also for inviting me, my, my good friend, and well, uh, the the sermon that I'm that I'm bringing this uh, morning with you, my dear family in Christ, probably it has a certain complexity. However, it is not my intention to turn it into a theological speech. I will try to make a claim to the truth because I don't have the absolute truth, and I may be wrong. That is why in this brief reflection I will make a claim, a claim to the truth. This particular chapter of Ruth is like a house. We can see its doors, its windows, and maybe we will see something inside. What interests me is trying to see at least its foundations, for that will have the, to build the house and see what is in the background. In primitive times, the stranger is fundamentally an enemy, since he or she is an unknown and therefore annoying. The behavior of the foreigner in his environment is reciprocally characterized by an attitude of fear and suspicion. The foreigner is often an outlaw, and he or she is exterminated, or he is held at bay and neutralized. It has no right. In Ruth's book, as a whole, makes to an, an inversion in the values of that time. Here, we seek to reaffirm the weak, the widow, the foreigner. It shows us when privilege is used also for good and can cause great changes and transformations and achieve wonderful uh, opportunities for affirming life in society. Ruth finds herself in the plight of serving as a mediator between the precarious situation of hunger and poverty that she lives together with Naomi and the possibility of a better life with dignity. But for that, she must divest herself of her dignity as a woman, being a foreigner and being poor, surrender her body to a stranger. A situation that is repeated day by day in the most marginalized places in our societies. Many times we speak of uh, Boaz as the Redeemer, but very rarely do we think within the framework of the possibilities of the story. How must Ruth has felt and what was going through her mind? The story ends with Ruth and Naomi finding favor with Boaz, but that is not what interests us here at all. The point here is that people who live in situations of poverty, marginalization, racism, and exclusion are willing to suffer all these things in order to achieve a little hope, while those who live in comfort and privilege do not. Sometimes things are taken for granted. The poor are poor because they don't work enough. Black people are troublemakers. Migrants are rapists and drug dealers. Women can do men's work and all that kind of lies. Racism is born as a feeling of superiority that results in the practice of a world and its domination. The supremacist believes that the world belongs to him by divine force and law. At least, that is what we received from the genocide on, of the lands of this continent in search of the Europe's dream, dreams and its colonial modernism. In this vision, creation is the object of the subject, the land and its resources. Non-white people, such as slaves and indigenous people, currently migrants and people of African descendant heritage continue to be seen as objects. Of which, me, of which must be exploited for the benefit of a white and rich and privileged minority. There is nothing more immoral 
to the mind and heart of God that then raises him in xenophobia. The book of Ruth is a sample of the victory of the poor, the marginalized, women, people of color, and migrants, not because their privilege give them a chance, but because the one who suffers has the power to rise up and affirm life and break with hatred and lies. I don't want to be assimilated just because I try to speak English with a broken accent or because I try to learn from this culture. Don't assimilate me. Don't lie to me. I want to be accepted and valued for who I am and for the right also to choose if I want to learn a language or not. Whether or not I want to learn English because my values, my humanity does not depend on the color of my skin, of the language I speak, if a migrant can cross an entire desert, or for an African-American person, it is possible for him or her to live every day with the stigma of his color in this supremacist society, due to his strength and his power in the face of suffering, how much more is it possible for a privileged white person to work for the good? and destroy the forces that produce death. So, my dear friends, I invite you. For me, it's very difficult to talk about racism from my perspective. Because what can I tell to you? I'm not that privileged as many of you are. But in the God, in the grace of God, I hope we can receive and do our part to value life, to affirm life against all that forces that produce death. So, my dear friends, it's important to let aside our privileges and walk and lower on ourselves for dignity and humanity. We don't ask you to do as much. Just feel your solidarity. Don't look at me from, the, from a high perspective from the top, as if I am a lower person. No, no, no. I am a human just like you, with the same dignity and the same right to have rights. This is the word of God. God bless us all. And Black Lives Matters. Amen.